If you're an academic who's interested in organizing all of your courses and projects in one database outside of your LMS or university software, then today's video is for you. We're continuing on our Notion theme of the month and talking about how to build this database as well as how to protect your project plan using Notion. We're keeping it pretty simple when doing these tutorials. There are whole channels with more advanced options, but if you don't have time for that, here is a quick approach to creating this kind of content in Notion. So we're here in my dashboard, which we'll cover next week, but today we're going to cover the My Courses and the Project Planner pages. And so going into my courses, this is that database that I was talking about. And this is an easy way to be able to navigate through all the courses you've taught, all the versions of the courses you've taught throughout your years in the past, in the future as an instructor. So we're going to start with a database, right? So it's not going to be just like, hey, here's a page and it's called English 101 and here's all the information. No, we start here with a database so that we can navigate through all of your courses very easily in the future. Because maybe right now you only have, let's say these five, but then five years in and you've taught four courses every semester, every fall and spring, and then two courses in the summer, like you're gonna have a lot of courses, a lot of different versions of the same course. And so it's helpful to have them all in a database so that you can filter through and say, hey, I need to see information on my English 101 that I taught in the spring of 2024. Let me pop that up and it'll be easy to do. So you'll have this database here and I started it off, but we'll add more to it in a second so I can show you how it works. But what you have here is the name of the course on the left and then what semester you're teaching the course, a description of the course, right? The name of it. And then if you wanted to, so I thought this might be useful, so I'll just add it here. You can connect, let's say your Google Drive file to each of the courses. So if you have Google Drive or Dropbox maybe, and you have a folder for each course, you can just go on and link it, link it here so it's easy to access on the page itself. And so this is just a starting point and we'll, we'll add more here. But the way this works is this is the table view, but then you could add more views. And so I've added a gallery view so now here is my gallery view of my course library. So I have each of the courses from that list, the term that I'm teaching them. And so in this case, it becomes an easy way to filter through depending on what you're looking for. So for example, here's the whole list, but I'm going to go ahead and click the ellipses and say, you know what? I want to filter this list. I only want to see the semester status. So filter semester status of my spring courses because right now I'm only looking for my spring courses and so now I see only those like actually you know what I'm going to go ahead it's actually the summer courses that I want to see and now you see the summer courses so that's why the database is so useful because you can filter depending on the various properties that you have on in the table so I'm going to go ahead and undo this so I see all the courses and we'll go back here. And so this was the semester status. That's why it was key, spring, summer, and then I had one for fall. But let's go ahead and add another status. Okay, so this status is gonna be the year. Okay, and so you have here, you have, what is it? It's a status, you wanna show it as, and as a select option rather than a checkbox, great. What are they going to be called? Well, in this case, it's going to be called 2024 because that was my first year teaching, let's say. And then I'm going to have one called 2025 and you keep going, right? So you have 2026, great. I want to add another one, 2027. And so now you have all of these different statuses which you can kind of ignore the in, in progress and complete here. So you have all different dates and you can change the colors. So I'm going to go ahead and change this color to orange. And now they're all different, but this one's a little blah, like this one purple. So there you go, right? So you have all of the years now that potentially you are teaching in. So these are all 2024, but let's change this one to 2025. This one's 2025 too. This one's 26 and this one is 24 as well, right? So these were the years that you taught these courses. 
So again, when you go to your course library and you say, hey, I want to filter, right? Well, you have the semester status as a filter, but now I want to add another filter as well, and it's the year status. So now I want to see my spring courses, but only from 2024. And so this is how you create your database to be really easy to navigate by adding the status icon, uh, sections. You can really navigate through and say, okay, this is the course I was looking for. Great. Now you enter into the course, right? So let's go ahead and for now, just get rid of the filters so we can see all of them again. We're going to delete that filter. Let's go ahead and delete that one too. Okay. So we see all of our courses here. And when you enter into a course page, right, you link, you click the, the, the name of it and you get into the page itself for this specific course. So you have here, this is English 230 from spring of 2025. It's my short, it's a short stories course. And so you can add whatever information you need about the course here. So maybe the learning objectives, the reading list, the major units, the course schedule. And so again, these major units and these days of the week, these weeks are all their own pages. So you have, okay, here's unit one, and now you have all the information about unit one for English 230. And then you go back, and I wanna see week one of this course, and you could put information here about week one, whatever the case may be. And so in that sense, you can now have a page for the course as a whole, but then sub pages within it so you had even more information. And it just depends obviously on what you want to include here. But just to kind of show you here, this is just header boxes, right? So it's an H2, this is just text. And so here you can kind of see as well that we, these are pages, right? So you've added a sub page into this page so that it all links together. On the top here, you'll see, you know, my courses, course list, English 230. Then you'd see unit one. Let's say you have in unit one another page, you see that page. So it's easy to follow the navigational path of the information. Now, something to notice here is this course schedule is another database, just like that first one on the main page. So if you go into table view, you'll see every single week has a different item on this list. They have a status, they have a topic. So let's say topic one is introduction and topic two is poetry and so on and so forth. So now again, when you have a gallery view, you see this information, but you only see week one, week two, week three. But if you go to these ellipses, you say, hey, properties, you only show the name right now. I also wanna see the topic of each week. And so now, it populates okay so that's a key one here too is as you add elements to the table right so these are all properties okay so and you can add tons more of these depending on how advanced you want to get but when you see it in the gallery view you can say hey what properties do you want shown and you can also change the order of them if you want them to appear above or below so the name is kind of you know stuck there at the beginning here but let's say you want to see the status as well you can kind of go ahead and change that and say hey i want you to show the status first and then the topic or vice versa but i don't want to see the status i just want to see that and so that's what i see now there's other ways of tweaking this as well let's say i go into week one and i'm like you know what i want to add a cover that cover has now been added you don't see it here though. Why not? Well, if you go to this ellipses and you say layout and you change, hey, what do you preview? Currently it's none. I wanna see the page cover. And so now you'll see the cover of each of the weeks. But if you don't wanna do covers, then like, you know what? I don't wanna see anything. I just wanna see the properties that I filtered as being shown on these cards. Going back to this table, again, this was just the basics here that I wanted to show but you really wanna explore and see, hey, what other properties can I add that might be helpful for my database? So I go to this plus sign here, I can go through and see my options. So let's see if we go down here. Maybe you have a co-teacher, you can add a person so you know who is co-teaching a given week in your course. Maybe you wanna go down here and you say, you know, last edited time. So you know, like, hey, the last time I edited this page was on this date. 
so you can kind of get a sense of how recently you've updated your content for this uh, course. So there really are a lot of options here depending on what you're looking for the database to do. But I didn't want to get too advanced here. This is just enough to, for you to be able to have a navigatable database of your courses. So we're back here on the main page with the course library view here that has a status and such. Now on, go back here. If you go back to the main page, right? So back up here, now you have the course list section, but I also added a section for teaching journals. So perhaps what you wanna do is you wanna have all of these courses and you can dive into them, but you also wanna see in a nutshell how a whole semester went. So in this case, this is just an H2, and then this is a subpage. And so again, if you go into spring 2025, you see all the courses that say you're teaching in 2025 in the spring. And these are toggle items called toggles. And so when you open this up, you see, okay, you know, here's my reflection for week one all the way down for this course. And then for 102, again, you can go ahead and just create a list. Okay, let's see a numbered list. And here are my reminders and so on and so forth. So basically, you can kind of get a sense of what your semester was like, what a certain course was like, and you can know that that if I go to my main page, sure, I can find all the individual courses in my database, but I want my bird's eye view of a semester and those will all be down here. So having shown you around, you know, just to give you a sense if you've never used Notion before, well, how do you create these things? What's the starting point if you were restarting from scratch? And so for example here, if you go backslash, it will pop up all the blocks that you can create in Notion. And so in this case, we're going to make the table view of a database and we're gonna call it, you know, courses. And so here is where you add the course name, right? So let's say English 101. And then we're gonna add a new page called English 233. And so let's just say those here. And then you do the check the plus sign to add all those properties. So again, you probably wanna add a status for the semester. So you will wanna call it semester. And then I wanted to show as the select. You can also make a show as a checkbox. But in this case, again, you click in and you edit it. So it's spring and fall. And it doesn't matter if it's in the to-do in progress or complete, you know, you can totally ignore that. But here are your three terms. And so that is set up. And then you can click and say, actually, that's a summer course. Okay, so that's adding in the semester status. I already showed you how to add in the year status, but you can just go through and that plus sign and see what is it that you want to add to your course information in this table. So you wanna add the description. So it includes the name of the course. You can do that. If you wanna go down here and add a co-teacher, you can do that. If you wanna add you know, a checkbox of things to remember to do for these courses, you can add a checkbox. If you have a certain Google Drive folder attached to that course, you can add a file or media, or you can actually add the Google Drive file. Uh, it can be integrated. So again, you can just go through and see what you wanna include in your database so that when you create the gallery view, which is just that plus sign in the gallery view. Now you see your courses in that different view. And again, it's blank because you don't have cover pages. You don't have covers for those pages yet. You can go up here and say, hey, I, I don't want covers. It's a little too you know, visual for me. So I wanna go ahead and go into the layout and say the card preview should just be none. And it'll just show the name of the page. You can also change the card size. It's currently medium. You can make it large if you wanted to. It's obviously not changing because there's very little in the card, but if there was more, then that would actually change the size of it. So that's something to consider as well. Uh, you can change the name of the gallery to again be maybe database. You can also change the icon that appears next to it if you want to. Um, I'm gonna keep it as is, but you can change it if you want. And so, that is how you create a database and how you would create that gallery view for it. 
There are other views, but I find, you know, really the table and the gallery are the big ones for this particular aspect. Um, so that's just something to keep in mind. Um, but you can, let's say, if you're going to go into a course and let's go to one of the ones, this one. And you have, you know, this gallery view. If you add a date one and you say, okay, the start date is whatever date it is, you can also add a calendar view and you'd be able to see all the courses and their start dates, et cetera. So, right. So it really just depends on what you want to make of it. Now separately, so that was your course database. Maybe you want to do a lot of project planning and you're like, I'm already in Notion. I might as well have a project planner in Notion too. So in that case, we're seeing here this product planner. And this was actually a template from Notion. So like you literally just add the template to your page. So templates are over here. But the way this works is, you know, you have a database, of course, right? So here's the table view. The status is over here on the left this time to kind of signal, is it in progress? Is it done? Is it not started? You have a gallery view and a calendar view because there's deadlines, so you can have a calendar. And there's a page for each one, so there's a gallery view. So you see here, and you can say, okay, my big projects for the semester are submitting my journal article draft, designing my summer courses, and planning for the graduate student conference. So you have a page here, but then this is also multiple pages, right? There are sub pages as well. So you have, hey, I'm, I need to research this, I need to outline the article, I need a draft, I need to do all this stuff. Here are deadlines for each of these things. So you have that sub page inside of the main page. And the same with these two as well. And so when you go into gallery view, you see your three main pages. But then when you click into it, you also see, hey, you know, here are the sub items that I have to do for this project. And so let's say I need to research this. Here's the research page, right? Um, and so you can kind of go through and say, okay, now I'm in the drafting stage. And so I see that. So you go through and you have the sub pages here. And you can, again, once you open this, type in whatever you need to, notes to yourself tied to this, par this particular project. I also added a calendar view so you can see deadlines as well. And again, that's just a plus sign and saying calendar. And that works because the projects have a deadline attached to them. So it all comes back to this database. I'm not going to show you how to make this considering I've already shown that. You add a database, you add the properties, so the status, the product name, the deadline. Keep in mind, you can add more projects very easily to the template. So let's say you have a new page here. It's not started. And this is to submit a conference proposal. Right, so you have that. You can go ahead and when you go here and hover, it says, oh, you wanna open this up and add sub items? Like, yes, I do. And then you could add a sub item, right? So check call for papers, right? And so now it's underneath that one. If you go to the templates, by the way, there's a lot of them here. So you can kind of just go through and you can look up one that's a project planner and just find one that's free that you would like to use. Click like if you found this video helpful and subscribe to not miss out on the future Notion themed videos as well as the videos into the future. I'm hoping to post every week this year. So if you are an academic who's looking for teaching tips, tools, ideas, resources, ed tech or tech tutorials, then this channel is for you. I'll link below some of my other videos because I have a few hundred on this channel already.